Hello! This is the first in a short series of videos about jQuery. jQuery is a JavaScript library, and we're going to start right in with an event listener, also called an event handler, which is one of the things that jQuery is most famous for, is most useful for. So what we're looking at is a very simple page. It has an H1, it has a little div that says click me, and it has a paragraph with a brown background. Now, what does this look like in the HTML? Okay, so we've got the normal head element, right? And then the body starts here, and you see the H1, and you see the div, nothing special in the div, just some text, and the paragraph, nothing special, just a paragraph. And very important, we have our script tags at the end above the closing body and HTML tags. And we have two script tags because the first one gives us the jQuery library. And I'm using the minified one because the file size is a little smaller. And then the second one, and the order is quite important, the second one is my own JavaScript that I wrote, and it's jQuery, but it's JavaScript, right? So it's a .js file. So what does the CSS look like? Before we look at the JavaScript, let's have a quick look at the CSS. So we've got normal things on our CSS, uh, some margins, you know, fonts and so forth. We've got the H1 with some styles on it but nothing exciting or different or unusual. And the P has all these uh, styles to make it have a brown background and so on. And the div, which is the little orange click me, it also has some styles on it to make it look the way it looks. But there's nothing special or unusual in the CSS. So everything that's gonna happen is in the JavaScript file. And so far, we don't have the actual actions happening. We have the listener, but we don't have what's going to happen when the event occurs. So I'll say a little more about that. But first, note that all the jQuery code in the file is wrapped in this document-ready function. So it starts like this, and it ends like this. So this line 14 here, that's got to be at the bottom of all your jQuery. Now in between, you can write tons of jQuery. You don't have to repeat the document ready. So it's simplest to just put the opening of this function at the top of your file and the closing of it at the bottom and remember not to delete it. And then in here, you can write all the jQuery you want. Now you may remember there's more than one way to write a function in JavaScript. And I just want to remind you of that so you recognize that we've got normal JavaScript functions in here. Um, the functions are not different because they're jQuery. So if this were a regular function style, we would have the word function and this arrow would be gone. And the same for the document ready function. We would have the word function before the pair of parentheses, uh, which are usually empty, but don't have to be empty, and the arrow would be gone. So that's one way to do it, but we're going to use the arrow style for these because it's shorter. Uh, so I'm going to undo what I did. There we go. So back to uh, the way we started. Also, you should know that these are both what's called anonymous functions, and that means they're functions without a name. Um, they run immediately. They are not written and then called separately because they have no names. You can't really call them. So this, again, is a normal JavaScript thing. It's not special to jQuery. So uh, now that we've saved this, I want to go back to the page for a second to show you that currently nothing happens when I click click me. I am clicking away and nothing is happening. So what do we have in our code so far? 
This is the event listener. And what it's listening for is a click, a click on a div. Now, if we had lots of divs on the page, it would listen for a click on any div, but we only have one. So it's only listening on that one. So it listens, this code listens to that div, to a div, and it listens for specifically a click, not a mouse over, not a mouse down, but a click. And then whatever we write in here, in between the beginning and the end of the event listener wrapper, as many lines as we write, those things will happen when that div is clicked. Okay, so what I'm going to put in there is code that will hide the paragraph, the brown paragraph that's below. So I will tab in, and so I will target the paragraph. And since it's the only P on the page, I will just use its element name, P. And then I will tell it to hide. Now this is jQuery, right? Telling it to hide. That line is jQuery. And also the dollar sign. Whenever you see the dollar sign, it means this is a special jQuery uh, object or a special jQuery command, right? The dollar sign means it's jQuery. If you leave the dollar sign out, then it just won't work because it won't know to look in your jQuery library file. So I'm going to save this and I have to reload over here. Now when I click, the paragraph is hidden. It was hidden by the click. So the code that we had listened for a click on the div, which is the little orange click me, and when it heard the click, it executed whatever code was wrapped up in the anonymous function. And the code happened to be hide the P. With what we have here, there's no way to bring the paragraph back. We can't show it. We don't have any code that allows it to show. Um, but we could have written this another way. We could take what we've got here and copy it, and we could paste it up above the event listener, and then we could have the event listener show the paragraph instead of hiding the paragraph. So how would that work? Well, when the document is ready and the DOM is loaded, right, the paragraph would instantly hide, and probably this would happen so fast that nobody would see the paragraph, right? And then the listener would listen for a click on the div as before, but now the callback function has a command to show that paragraph that had been hidden. So if we save this and we reload our page, so when we reload, there's no paragraph, because it was hidden by the jQuery. But now, when we click it, the paragraph shows. So this is basic Event Handlers 101, but I'm walking through it slowly so that you can really understand how they work, because we can do so many things other than show and hide. We can do things other than click, and I'll cover those in other videos. Now, another thing that uh, we can do with this very simple code, instead of hiding it to begin with, I'll get rid of that, instead of showing or hiding in the callback function, there is a jQuery method called toggle. And what toggle does is it takes both show and hide together. And so if the paragraph is visible, toggle will hide it. If it's hidden, Toggle will show it. So pretty cool. That way we can have our one button do two things. So now we listen for a click on the div, and when the click happens, the P will be toggled, show and hide, show and hide. So let's save, let's reload, and when we click and we see the paragraph, it hides. When we click again, it shows. Hides, shows. So that's how toggle works. 
that's a pretty useful thing to know about. I mentioned before that in this case, we're just using element names. So we're saying div and p, which would affect all the divs on the page and all the p's on the page. Um, it, it works fine in this example because we have only one div and one p. If I go into the uh, index and I actually create some more divs, I can call them two, three, and four, and save and reload. Uh, if I click those, I can click any one at all and it does the same thing. So this is not usually what you want. You don't want uh, clicking a whole bunch of different things to all have the same effect, right? Um, the other thing that you might not realize is that if we had multiple paragraphs, put down another one, put down another one, save and reload, all right, so now we have three paragraphs. Well, if I click any button, they will all hide. They will all show. So that's the problem with using element names. Um, sometimes it works if your page is really simple the way mine was to begin with. But usually you're going to have a lot of, of paragraphs, right? So if you wanted to hide just this one, you would probably give it an ID possibly a class, um, but here I'll call it special. And let's make sure that you can see that these are actually different. Okay, so if I reload, right? So now my three paragraphs are different. And what I'm gonna do in my JavaScript is instead of saying P, I'm going to put the hash, that means ID, right? And I'm gonna write that ID word that I gave it in the HTML. And now only that one, the first one, the long one, that's the only one that will show and hide because I targeted the ID and not the element P. So everything's saved and if I reload now, only the top one hides. No matter what I click, it's only affecting the top paragraph and not the others. So I hope that this has been a good introduction to the event listener or event handler structure that's very specific to jQuery. How to use it, how to know what you're clicking and what you're acting on inside the callback function. So the callback function is what comes after click, and it's actually everything after the comma that comes after the action word, right? Click, right? So everything after that inside the parentheses is the callback function. And so when this div is clicked, any code inside here will run.